begin to utilize the confession that we did at the end of the sermon on last Sunday and uh, use that to uh, as a act as a prophetic act of putting on your armor as you face the enemy because surely we we are uh, in a battle whether we like it or not uh, there are two kingdoms that w that uh, is at uh, at war and whether you like it or not you are in war and one of the things that like today we had the the uh, uh, the the awesome uh, uh, privileged that we were able to praise God and uh, do warfare in praise I felt like that we were doing warfare last week in praise I felt like there was a lot of warfare that was done uh, in praise uh, this week and uh, praise is one of the greatest weapons that you'll ever be able to use against the enemies that come against us and if you learn how to praise God there is nothing that can defeat you let me say that again because many didn't hear it. If you can praise God, there is nothing that can defeat you. Because there's something about praise that God comes down and visits us in praise. And everything, praise God, that we're facing becomes uh, uh, diminished, becomes obsolete, becomes helpless before the praises of God. Um, Psalms 149. I quoted it earlier, and I'm gonna I'm gonna read it. Uh, I'm not I'm not planning on preaching today. I feel like that we've praised God. I feel like God's already moved in such a special way. But I want to give context to what we do, because sometimes you know if if people don't understand, they think you know well all they did was just come in. All all we did was just praise and lift and shout and call say, say Jesus, and as if we did not do anything. But if we understand the power of praise, if we understand what praise does, what praise can do, uh, then we'll, we'll uh, you know, praise and worship will not be something that just is a prelude to the, to the sermon. But we'll, we'll realize that, that we are actually uh, penetrating uh, the works of darkness and we are subduing kingdoms of darkness through our praise. Psalms 149, the first verse says, Praise ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song, and praise in the congregation of the saints. See, see the songs, there, there is what is called the new song. The new song, that means that a song that God gives birth to that you ain't never heard before. And God wants to do that with us sometimes. So when you see me just begin to sing to the Lord, I was singing a new song. I was obeying the scripture here and singing a new song. I didn't know what words to sing. They just came out of my spirit and praise God and expressing my love to him. The second verse said, let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Verse 3 says, let them praise his name. We were, we were praising the name of Jesus today. And said, let it praise his name in the dance some of y'all was dancing let them sing praises unto him with the tamro and the heart I seen some of the dances with the tamarines and praise God and amen and uh, you know the the, uh, the old time pianos uh, had a big heart in them and the keys hit the heart hit the string of the heart that's the way the piano was so he talks about the tamro of the heart and he says the Lord takes pleasure in his people he will beautify the meek with salvation verse 5 said let the saints be joyful in glory when the glory of God comes in you just need to get in and just get in the joy of the Lord the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength in other words praise God you just might as well get joyful in the things of God begin to just be joyful in his glory let let them sing aloud unto their uh, un, upon their beds and then the verse 6 says let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Many of us don't know that when we praise God, there is a sword that's being released against the enemy. The things that have been coming against you the moment that you release yourself in praise. And some of us are going to have to become uninhibited in our praise. See, it's very easy to be cute in praise. You know, praise the Lord, you know. 
but when you really get uninhibited in praise you like David the Bible says when David brought the ark back to the house of God that David danced before the Lord until his kingly robe came off and his wife got mad at him that was the you know she was mad at him talking about what you didn't done and disrobed yourself you the king she was Saul's daughter see Saul was not a worshiper and folk will get mad at you for praising God I don't want to go to that church. They praise God too much. Well, you go on down the street to the first church of the Frigidaire where you can have yourself an icicle sandwich every Sunday. I want some fire. Amen. A two-edged sword in your hand. When you praise God, God is working on you. The Bible says God inhabits the praises of his people. In other words, God gets in your praise. And when God comes down in, in your praise, every enemy that's around you, every enemy that surrounds you, God begins to take vengeance upon them. Look what it says. It says, let the high praises of God be in your mouth and a two-edged sword in your hand. And the verse 7 says, to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people. Verse 8 says, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. In other words, when you start praising, God starts binding. When you start praising, God starts binding. When you start praising, God starts binding stuff that's been binding you. God starts binding them. So why do you praise him so much? Because I'm a David. I'm not a Saul. I'm not Pastor Saul. I'm Pastor David. I praise myself. I don't just tell people to praise and sit up with my with my with my bishop look on and my and my legs crossed. As if I'm the one that everybody is praising. I'm gonna praise God. David praised God. His wife got mad at him because he, she, he praised God and praised God, accused him of, of, of disgracing himself. He said, you think that's something? He said, I'll, I'll be more undignified than that. Look at somebody say, have you ever been undignified in your praise? See, some folks love dignified praise. You know, you know, the choir singing, you know, and they just love that kind of praise. Because it doesn't require them to do anything. But at Living Bread, we have what we call praise and worship. And we believe, praise God, that when we start praising God, that God comes down in our midst and starts working against the stuff that's been working against us and delivers us, praise God. It says he binds to bind their kings, talking about high-level demons. Now, I, I, I ain't... I'm, I don't have time to talk about this. Maybe I'll talk about this next week. But in spiritual warfare, there are certain levels of warfare. There are what we call ground level spiritual warfare. There's what we call occult level spiritual warfare. And then there's strategic level spiritual warfare. In other words, praise God. And, and some have even said four levels. Most say three. Some say four. And they talk about it. There's a, there's a kingly level of spiritual warfare. That is where that you're doing battle with, with spirits that are in the heavenlies, the ruling demons that are in the heavenlies that, that, that work over territories and regions and keep them encapsulated in their mess. And this, and, and what, what we've learned in spiritual warfare is that there are ranks in the spirit. There's ranks in the spirit. Many of us don't understand that the fivefold ministry are ranks in the spirit. The church, they said, I said in the church, first apostles. That word first there means first in time, rank, and order. And so, you know, folk always talk about they want to be an apostle. I don't know if you really want to be an apostle because we deal with high level demons. We deal with king demons and praise God and, and that rule in regions and territories. And so we, we don't just do ground level. But this tells us that our praise transcends every level. If you ain't an apostle, you can deal with high level demons if you know how to praise God. Because he will bind their kings in with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. You release fetters of iron when you praise God. 
You release. In other words, praise God. When you start praising the demons and devils that's been coming. In other words, praise God. I, I was trying to think of a of, of a of a of a uh, I seen something on, on a movie. I don't even know what the movie was, but it just came to me like a flash. And it's when it's like you know, like like a, 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 a somebody throws a a a, 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 a a lasso with 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 weights on it, and when it gets to them, it just wraps them up. And and I and that's what I see in the spirit is that when we begin to praise. God begins to release these bindings, these these chains, these 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 and and chain and bind up the demons that have bound, bound us. I'm almost through. Look at night verse 9 to execute upon them the judgments that are written. This is this honor have all say all all saints, all saints, all saints. What I want you to see is that praise is an equal opportunity weapon for all of us to use against the demons and the devils. And maybe you have been dealing with some demons that are high level and praise God. And maybe praise God in the in the spirit. Maybe you're not a general in the spirit. But if you'll praise God, God will send you angels that are high ranking angels that will act on your behalf and will bind up the demons and the devils that's been binding you that will shackle them, chain them, render them completely harmless, helpless, e immobile. They cannot move any longer. Why? Because you're willing to praise. I learned this early on when I got saved at the age of 17. I gave my life to the Lord. And when I gave my life to the Lord, I didn't know nothing about spiritual warfare, strategic warfare. I didn't know, praise God. Uh, I knew there was a devil. I didn't know much about him, praise God. And, but I knew one of the things that the saints taught us was how to praise God. They taught us to praise God. And, and we did not have service until we praised God. You did not have service until you had a encounter in praise with God. And I learned, praise God, how to praise my way through everything and anything that would come in my life. And, and, and when I was struggling in a certain area, maybe a certain area of sin in my life, I learned to praise my way through it. I praised until those sins fell off my body, till those sins came out of me, till those devils came out. I would praise God because I didn't know no, I didn't know nothing else. I didn't know how to say thank. You. I knew how to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. When the devil would be coming at my mind, I'd be saying thank you, thank you, thank you. I'd say thank you, Jesus, until my mind became calm, until the demon of my mind began to go and praise God, and my mind calmed down because I said Jesus. If you learn how to say Jesus and praise Jesus, you can get through anything in life. You ain't got to be an apostle, a prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, bishop, archbishop, archbishop deluxe. You don't have to be any of that. All you have to be, praise God, is a saint. It says here, praise God, that he executes them, the judgment written. This is the honor of all saints. All saints. Some folks only praise them in church. I praise them at home. I'm praising them walking through the kitchen, walking. I praise them in the, uh, in the basement. I praise them, praise God. I praise them while I'm exercising. I praise them, praise God. I praise them in the shower. I praise them while I'm shaving. I praise them while I'm going down the street. I praise them in the car. Why? Because I know, praise God, that if I will praise him, everything that came against me will be bound. God will release the shackles and the bindings and the chains upon them. The honor of all saints. That's why I got to teach you how to praise God before I teach you anything else. And as long as you're inhibited in praising God, you ain't got there yet. I know. I, I see some of you. You still still inhibited. That's all right. We, we're gonna keep you. One one of these days, you're gonna be out running and dancing. One day, you're gonna be running up to the altar. Cause there is a breaking out. There's a you know. It, it's kind of like. I'm, I'm trying to get through here. It's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like the, 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 the old school dances that they used to, we used to have. They used to call them sock hops. How many remember the sock hop? Sock hop. So we go to the sock hop. You know, we don't let our mama know because my father's a pastor and preacher. 
so he don't know I'm going to the soccer. But when you go to soccer, and then and, and you got all of the girls standing on this side and all of the boys on that side, cause we all scared. We scared to ask somebody to dance. And then finally, you know, and then we huddle, you know, the boys we huddle. Well, you know, man, I think I'm gonna go. I think, well, I'm gonna go over there. If you go over there, I'm gonna. Go. You know. Finally, we get up enough nerve to go over, you know, and. We, 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 and then, then one starts dancing, then, then the next one goes over, and then they, the next one's dancing, and then next thing you know, everybody's out there, and then folk that was dancing real reluctant, you know, they was dancing real reluctant, you know, they, just, they didn't got, I mean, they just lost their mind out there on the dance floor. That's the way some folks in the church. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hey, oh, praise the Lord. Eh, praise the Lord. Oh, eh, oh, oh, praise the Lord. They trying their best to hold. Oh, my, 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 ha. He told my, ha. Ooh, oh. And they be just, the next thing you know, you, we keep on praying. The next thing you know, they just throw caution to the wind. Hey, hey, glory, 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 glory. Why? Because you have thrown caution to the wind. You have broke out of your comfort zone. Y'all need to break out of your comfort zone and praise him. Because if you knew what he was doing in the prayer, if God would show you a vision, if God would open up your eyes, I'm going to close with this. This is my third close. I remember we were going through a, a time period, and we've shared this before, and we were going through such a, a struggle and I mean it looked it, it looked bad financially we were going through I think that was a time we, we had no heat on in our house and we're going through a lot but anyway God God showed Sister Hogan a vision and in the vision she found herself in a box with chains on and she was in the box and she said in the box in the dream she sees and she says and she says and she's crying out she's all tied up and the Lord says praise me and she says she, she starts very quietly praising God. Praise you. Thank you, Jesus. And the Lord says, praise me. And she gets louder. Praise me. She gets louder. Praise me. She gets louder. All of a sudden, she says, she begins to praise. All of a sudden, the chains that had her, the box, first of all, exploded. And she stood up. And, actually, and God kept saying, praise me. And she praised. And then all of a sudden, the chains broke off of her. And she found herself with her hands lifted up and praising God. God had broke her out of the situation she was in. If we could see what was going on today when we begin to praise God, some of us would have got up and we would have just lost our mind in praise. I'm closing with this there's a song by the Imperials. Some of y'all don't even remember who the Imperials is. They're, they were a white singing gospel group, so I don't blame you. I know black folks, we. But they had a song that says, when you're up against a struggle that shatters all your dreams and your hopes have been cruelly crushed by Satan's manifested schemes and you feel the urge within you to submit to earthly fears, don't let the faith you're standing in seem to disappear. Praise the Lord. He can work through those who praise him. Praise the Lord. Our God inhabits praise. Praise the Lord for the chains that seem to bind you serve only to remind you. They drop powerless behind you when you pray. Stand on your feet. So I just want to give context to what would happen today. So to let you know, we were not out of order. We were in the order. God wanted us to praise him. He wanted to do some things in the spirit that he, that, that, that he can only do. 
Some of you, I'm telling you, it's, this, this day, you'll, it'll, you'll mark it down as a day in which the Lord visited you through the praise. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and praise you, O oh God, for this day. We thank you, Lord God, for your presence in this place. We thank you, O oh God, that we have the privilege to praise, that we have the honor to praise you. And that praise is more than just words coming out of our mouth or our hands lifted, but it is a weapon against the enemies of God. And that as we praise, you loose chains upon our enemies and you bind up the things that have bound us. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, that every demon and devil that has come against us, Lord, that as we were praising him, as those that praised him, those that obeyed you in praise, that there was a loosing of of a binding on every demonic stronghold, every demonic spirit, and praise God, and you are loosing us to walk in freedom and liberty. Father, that we will honor you and praise all the days of our life, that it will be not something we do just in church, but we'll do it at home. Lord, that we'll praise in our home, in our cars, on our jobs. Lord, that we'll be worshiper, praise and worshipers, oh God, uh, by choice, Lord. And Father, I thank you right now for what you're doing in the hearts of your people as we have come together today. Father, I ask you in Jesus' name that you will minister to the hearts of those, Lord God, uh, those that don't know you, Lord, that they will come to a knowledge of the truth, O oh God, that they will know that you are the one that died for their sins and that you have a purpose for their lives, Lord, and that you want to use them for your glory. Father, I break off every spirit of shame off of your people. Lord, as David worshiped and his wife was ashamed, I break that spirit off. And Father, you said because she rebuked David and despised him for praise, she became barren and could not have children. Father, we do not want to abort our destiny, abort our future by, by criticizing and coming against those that are willing to praise. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for the release of your anointing in this place today. We give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're in this place and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're not born again. You don't know him as your Lord and Savior. Or maybe you have accepted him in times past, but you are away from the Lord. You're not walking with God as you should. And you want to make it right with God.